Hello, good afternoon. Uh, Neil Sawson here again. Um, uh, this video will be a short, brief, I hope, uh, demonstration of one of Freddie Gruber's teachings, uh, one of the techniques he showed me uh, many, many years ago. Uh, actually, this is not really a technique. It's more of a concept, more of an approach. Uh, he called this exercise that I'm about to show you the system, although Freddie did not like the term or phrase system applied to his teaching. He always told me, he always said his, his teaching was an approach. He had an approach to teaching, uh, a concept. Uh, a system denotes something that's locked in and the same all the time, never changes. His, his teaching is always evolving, so he had an approach. But he called this exercise, for want of a better term, the system. The system uh, comprises, a, it's a three measure phrase, it comprises of three rhythms, eighth notes, eighth note triplets, and sixteenth notes, over and over. Um, I'm going to present this uh, in uh, the traditional grip, the conventional grip left hand. Uh, for you match grip players, all you'll have to do is um, uh, the suggestions I make for the right hand system, uh, apply that to the left hand, and you'll have the system in the match grip. Just do with the, with the left hand what you do with the right hand. Okay, I'm going to use a, a metronome just in the beginning to give you a frame, time frame or frame of reference, tempo-wise. I have the metronome set today to quarter note 120. I'm going to play a, a measure of eighth notes to a measure of eighth note triplets to a measure of sixteenth notes with the left hand, and then I'm going to do the same thing to the right hand just to give you an idea of what this looks like, um, and then I will break it down and talk about it a bit. Uh, some people call this. Um, Thing I'm about to do, a push-pull technique. Push-pull technique, I never call it that. Freddie never used that term. Some people call it the pump. Um, never used that term either. He just called it the system and left it at that. Here's the system. I'm going to um, show you this a system first without any fingers at all. I'm just going to be using the seesaw in the left hand. Uh, the grip will seesaw over the grip and um, it goes like this. One more time. Okay, that's the exercise, the basic exercise. Freddie originally showed me this uh, system. Um, its purpose was, it was a warm-up exercise. At the beginning of each practice session, I was to do this for a few minutes, each hand, just to Liber up, loosen up the, the wrists and the fingers and get the juices flowing and so forth. Maybe spend five, ten minutes doing it at various tempos. And it was basically just a warm-up exercise, but later he would apply it to certain rudiments and certain rhythmic phrases. You could use this uh, technique um, um, uh, in right symbol work. Uh, a, lot, a lot of different things can, can be applied to, so hence he called it the system. Now what I just showed you uh, was a basic uh, bare bones scale down version. I wasn't using the fingers all, at all, if you notice. I was just bouncing from the grip. The stick is actually uh, acting like a seesaw in the hand. Um, if you noticed, if you're observant, you'll notice, like with the eighth notes, the first measure, here, eighth notes, one and two and three and four and, my wrist is doing something interesting. It's coming up, it's coming down on the count, on the one, two, three, and the four, and two, and so it's like a convex, a concave position. Freddie called this the reverse release. And on the ands, it's coming up, it's a convex position, and the bottom of the wrist is concave. And the, on one, two, three, and four, it's the opposite. The top is convex, and the uh, concave rather, and the bottom of the hand is more or less convex. Um, this, what he called the release reverse release. This would be the release with the top of the wrist uh, convex, and this would be the, re the reverse release, which is the opposite of this. It's, it's concave, it's curved. Um, on each tap, I'm going from release position to reverse release position. 
This is just the eighth note snare. This keeps the, the momentum going. It, it acts to distribute the energy uh, between the wrist, the grip, and later on the fingers when I bring the fingers into play. So um, basically without the stick, I'm just doing this. One and two and three and four and one and two and etc. When the stick rebounds upwards, when the tip of the stick is pointing upwards on one, two, three, and four, I'm in a reverse release position. In other words, the top of the wrist is concave. When I come down to play the taps, the ands in between the counts, and the tip of the stick is facing downwards, pointing downwards toward the drum, touching the drum, I'm in a release position. Now the top of the wrist is convex, and the bottom of the wrist and hand is concave. And it just kind of alternates. Release, reverse, release, release, reverse, release. Now, for the eighth notes, working within an eighth note framework, uh, to bring the fingers into play, I'm going to open the fingers on one, two, three, and four on the count. And I'm going to close the fingers gently, slightly, assuming the left hand grip on the ands. Um, that goes like this. One, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, one, two, three, four. Now you don't have to accent on this. You'll notice if you count one, and two, and three, and four, and I'm extending the fingers outwards in a relaxed manner on one, two, three, and four, and I'm bringing the fingers in around the stick on the ants while I'm uh, maintaining or uh, continuing to sustain this release, reverse release kind of action. So I throw the fingers out on one, two, three, and four, I open the hand on one, two, three, and four, and I close the hand, I bring the fingers in around the stick on the ants. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And you spend a few minutes just doing eighth notes, you know, until it gets comfortable. You start at a tempo that suits your technique. It doesn't have to be fast. Just find a tempo that allows the stick to become buoyant so it bounces. All right. Um, then the next part of the exercise is eighth note triplets. Same concept, only because this is an odd phrase, a three-figure phrase, you're going to find that the fingers open outward, extend outward on one and three, but they come in and close around the stick, wrap around the stick to form the grip on two and four. So eighth note triplets. One and the two and the three and the four and the I'm opening and closing the fingers on each tap, but the fingers are open on one and three, and they are closed on two and four. One and the two and the three and the four and the one and the two and the three and the four and the one, two, three, four, open, close, open, close. Speed it up a little. Now you'll notice when I do this in the triplet fashion, it's the release, reverse release is going, uh, will, will alternate on every eighth note, on every note. One and uh, two and uh, three and uh, see that? Reverse release, release, reverse release, re release, reverse release, release, reverse release. One and lee, two and lee, three and lee, four and lee, one and lee. Okay, that's the triplets, uh, eighth note triplets. So if you do a bar of eighth notes to a bar of eighth note triplets, it'll go like this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. One and two and three. Back to eighth notes. Eighth notes. Eighth note triplets. Open, close, open, close. The third part of the exercise is sixteenth notes. Basically the same thing as the eighth notes, but doubled. Sixteenth notes. One E and a two E. You'll notice the hand opens on one and two and three and four and on all the eighth notes, and it closes, assumes the grip position on all the E's and the U's. The release, reverse release feel stays the same. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a etc. One more time, six E notes. One. Notice the four fingers opening and closing on every sixteenth note. Open, close, open, close. Slow it down. One E and a two E and a. The finger, the stick rebounds, pops up on one and two and three and four and. I'm in a reverse position. The hand is down. The tip of the stick is up. 
on all the E's and the U's, the tip of the stick is down, the hand is raised slightly and I'm in this release position. Reverse release, release, reverse release, release. That's basically the left hand. Now, the exercise um, in its entirety goes something like this. One and two. Right hand. One and the two and the three and the four. What do you have? Left hand. Triplets. Sixteenths. Right hand. Eighth notes. Eighth note triplets. Sixteenths. Now you really can't see the right hand in this position because you're, all you're seeing is the back of the hand. So I'm going to take a second and uh, we're going to adjust the camera. I'm going to turn around and I'm going to show you how the mechanics of the right hand. Right hand, um, and of course this will be also done with the left hand if you're inclined to practice this, the match grip. You do the exact same thing with the left hand as I'm about to show you with the right hand. And as soon as the camera is set up, I'll show you the mechanics of the right hand system. Okay, right hand system, eighth notes. Basically, I just drop the forearm on one, two, three, and four. And when I do that, the stick, if you do it right, don't catch the pad. That's annoying, isn't it? If you just catch the center of the pad with the tip, the stick wants to rebound. It wants to come up off the, the, the head, uh, off the pad. And in doing so, if your fingers are relaxed enough, and I'm, when I say fingers, I mean second, third, and fourth fingers. If they're relaxed enough, the ass end of the stick, this section of the stick, will just open the, open, uh, the fingers. It will move the fingers to the open position, just like that. One, copy, straight down, one, open. And then I just close and come back up again. Open, close, open, close. And when I close the, the hand, I'm basically gently squeezing the gas of the stick into this groove of the palm of the hand, this long groove here next to the fatty part of the thumb. So it's on the one, two, three, and four, I'm open in the up position, and on the ands, the stick is pointing down, and my hand's in the closed position. Open, close, open, close. It's that simple. And you let, I'm letting the stick open and close the fingers, or rather, I'm letting the stick open the fingers, and I'm just gently closing the fingers on all the hands. One, and two, and three, and four. And open on the count, on the numbers, close the fingers gently on all the ands. One, and two, and three, and four, and open, close, open, close, open, close. Now you'll notice, with the right hand, I'm in a constant release. The wrist is relaxed, I let it hang, but I don't let it too much, it doesn't dangle. It's, it's just a, a natural release. The top of the hand, the wrist joint or wrist hinge, and the top of the forearm are in a convex, basically in a, more or less in a convex position. The bottom of the forearm and the wrist hinge, wrist joint, and the palm of the hand are in a concave position. Always. And I just let the, as the stick rebounds off the, the pad, I just let the fingers relax open. The stick actually pushes the fingers open. I'm not thrusting the fingers out or snapping them out, none of that. There's no snapping, no thrusting, no undue force. The fingers are more or less neutral, and the stick is uh, firmly but loosely gripped in between the index finger, the first joint of the index finger, just underneath the fingernail, and the pad of the thumb, opposite the thumbnail. And then the second, third, and fourth fingers just open and close gently. And when the stick pops off or rebounds off the drum head or pad, it just pushes the fingers open. Just allow the stick, relax, if you relax enough, you just allow the stick to open the fingers on all the counts. One and two and three and four and. That's all that is. The eighth note triplets, same thing. But now you're gonna open the fingers on one and three because it's an odd phrase and you're gonna close the fingers, or the close the hand on two and four. One and the two and the three and the four and the one and the two and the three and the four and the. Just open and close on every note. Three, four, one, two, three, four. Eighth note triplets. Uh, the sixteenth notes, basically the same thing as the eighth notes I just showed you, however, it's twice as fast. One and the two and the three and the four and the. So I'm opening on the eighth notes. And I'm closing the hand on all the E's and the U's. Just like that. Very relaxed. Just letting the stick push the fingers open on the eighth note count. One and two and three and four. And open, 
open, open, open. And I'm just gently closing the fingers, pressing the stick, the acid of the stick into the palm on the E's and the U's. You put the entire phrase together, you get this. Eighth notes, triplets, sixth notes. Eighth notes, triplets, sixteenth. Eighth notes, triplets. And that's basically all there is to it. Um, then you, um, when you practice this, the way Freddie had me do this was to alternate the hands. One cycle with the left hand, one cycle with the right hand. So the, starting with the right hand, or start with the left hand, it doesn't matter. Left hand, traditional grip. And then uh, this is a good way to just warm up the hands and get, uh, uh, it's a good precursor to the finger control, finger control technique, a good warm up for that. Later on, Freddie had me apply this technique to flams, paradiddles, double strokes, and we'll get into that on a future video. For now, just work on this basic approach to the system, as Freddie called it, and um, uh, it should go a long way to developing the speed in your fingers and the relaxed control. Notice I used the term relaxed in front of control. It's not just control, it's a relaxed control. If the control is stiff and forced, it's not really any good. So you have to be relaxed at all times when doing these exercises. And eventually you'll feel the stick seesawing in the left hand and over the middle finger of the right hand. And uh, later on we'll talk about some applications of this technique. For now, thank you very much on behalf of uh, Michael Dubin, my associate and partner in this venture, and Lighter Than Air Productions. I hope uh, this helps, uh, gives you some insight to um, what Freddie, one of Freddie's many, many, many uh, approaches, approaches to drum technique. Thank you. Good night.